Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. If you are new to this channel, allow me to introduce myself. I am the natural Chris Black of the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, independent professional wrestler, and everybody's favorite narcissist. Now, I'm back once again for my coverage of the 2021 G1 Climax Tournament. And this is night six, which means we are returning to the B-block side of the tournament. There are five matches tonight, no undercard matches, so I will not keep you waiting. Let's get right to the action. In the opening match, we have Evil defeating Tai Chi. You know, as I'm watching Tai Chi's entrance, I think back to my very first impression of Tai Chi, which was at the G1 Climax 29 tournament. He comes out doing his singing shit, and I'm like, who is this goofy bastard? Little did I know, this man packs one hell of a punch and kick. And besides that, he's become one of my favorites. Tai Chi preemptively takes out Dick, which doesn't sound right now that I've said it. But anyway, we're talking about Dick Togo. Tai Chi is not fucking around. He goes right after evil, but gets distracted by Dick. Uh, we get the table spot. Yeah. The evil table spot. Except for this time doesn't go so well because the timekeeper hits his head on the bleachers. So they had the table set up right in front of the bleachers. So when he fell backwards, his head kind of hit the bottom step. He gets checked out by the doctor. And I'm wondering if they're even going to allow that shit again because, you know, evil normally does this twice in the match. Evil takes control, throwing Tai Chi into the exposed buckle. But the ref sees it and refuses to count. This is what I like about the New Japan refs. They definitely enforce rules, unlike a lot of other referees in some promotions. If they see something, they don't like it. If they don't want to disqualify the guy, they'll just refuse to count. And they, there's no bones about it. They're just like, nope, not going to do it. But anyway, getting back to the match, Tai Chi goes on the attack, first choking Evil, and then he chokes Dick on the apron. Whoa, pause. That sounded really bad chokes dick togo on the apron <laughs> evil is standing on the apron and takes a running boot from tai chi sending him into the timekeeper table once again he falls backwards <laughs> this, this this guy i hope he gets hazard pay once again we get less distractions from dick togo during this match so it's been pretty good so far tai chi delivered a hard axe bomber and then snatches off his tights singling that it's go time Evil tries throwing the ref into Tai Chi, who just tosses him aside, blocks a low blow, and hits Evil with the dick kick. And this time, I don't mean Togo. He slaps him in the Gato clutch. The ref is distracted by Dick Togo, so he's not there to make the count. Tai Chi takes out both Dick Togo and Evil with a double X bomber. This final sequence of pen attempts was absolutely just beautiful. My eyes were glued to this match. And then the bullshit happens. Dick Togo grabs Miho Abe, Tai Chi, and the ref is distracted. Evil hits the low blow. Kevin Kelly monitor stays on. Both men are down. Evil delivers and everything is evil, but does not cover him. Instead, he puts him in a scorpion lock. Dick Togo grabs Miho Abe, forcing her to bear witness as the ref calls for the bell because Tai Chi is out cold. What a fucking crazy ass opening match. What a way to start the show. This has by far been my favorite evil match of this entire year. Next match, we have Sonata defeating Chase Owens. This is Sonata's 100th match this year with NJPW. Both of these men are showcasing their mat wrestling ability, both having some amateur backgrounds. Chase tries to put Sonata in the paradise lock and fails. <laughs> we see the heel side of Chase showing a bit in this match. He has a, definitely got a different swagger about himself tonight. I guess he's figuring that with two losses already, all this honorable fighting shit probably isn't working for him. Sonata fights back, and this time he puts on the paradise lock the correct way. The momentum is swinging now in Sonata's favor. He hits a TKO. But when he goes up for the moonsault, he misses, but recovers quickly, locks in the skull in. 
But Chase escapes. We get a nice back and forth sequence with both guys going for the killing blow, but not ever getting it. Sonata locks in the skull in. After some pin attempts, he gets him incapacitated enough to go for the moonsault and gets the one, two, three, earning two more points. And at 0-3, Chase is pretty close to being out of contention to win the tournament. In the next match, Jeff Cobb defeats Hiroki Goto. This was going to be a tough challenge for Goto. He's sitting at 0-2 so far, while Cobb is 2-0 for the tournament. The two is jockeying for position, trying to gain the advantage. Goto is being super aggressive, takes control of this match. I mean, he's got to be aggressive. He's 0-2. Well, 0-3 after this match. Goto stays aggressive until he gets caught slipping. I mean, literally caught and taken down. Jeff Cobb starts to go to work on Goto's back. Cobb is tossing him around like he's a chump. Uh, Goto, according to the commentator, said that he won in his very first G1 Climax tournament and was the first man to do so. So Goto isn't a chump, even though he's being thrown around like one. He fires up getting some offense on Cobb, but it's not enough to keep Cobb down. Goto is fighting like a madman trying to stay on top of him. He gets him up for a Ushiguroshi, but Cobb is just too much for him. He hits a spin cycle, goes for a tour of the islands, but Goto is able to escape. He tries a quick roll up and then several more quick pin attempts, but catches a headbutt. And after a tour of the islands, Jeff Cobb gets the pin and another two points. Goto again leaves empty handed. Oh boy, 0 and 3. That's. Well, we've had people have oh, start out with 0-3 and, and then come back to make it into the finals, but I I don't know, Goto. Not looking good for you either. In the next match, we have Tanahashi defeating Tama Tonga. Finally, we get a heel for Tanahashi to face. We get a basic opening, but, you know, the heel face dynamic makes everything better. We even get some air guitar. He must can only do that against heels. The pace is a lot faster than Tanahashi's last two matches in the early stages. Tama Tonga is getting some heat on Tanahashi with Tana fighting back from underneath. Tama Tonga utilizes the Tongan death grip, applying it twice to Tanahashi. Tanahashi fights back and puts the Tongan death grip on Tama Tonga. Tanahashi goes for the clover leaf. Tama Tonga avoided being turned over and then does the Tongan death grip while he's on the bottom in order to escape. Tama mocks Tanahashi using both a sling blade and a high fly flow to pin, but doesn't get the three count. Tana hits one high fly flow, misses the second one, and got caught with a gun stun. Tama Tonga, instead of trying to pin, he starts celebrating and then tries with a cocky pin, but gets rolled up by Tanahashi and that's it. Tanahashi wins, picking up two more points. I really enjoyed this match. I was kind of a little critical of Tanahashi's first two matches, but this one, I really like this one. And in our main event, we have Kazuchika Okada defeating my boy Yoshihashi. In this match, we got a chaos versus chaos match. Yoshi, already showing the wear and tear from this tournament, is wearing K-tape on the shoulder. It's a slow start, both men going hold for hold. Okada is really good at dictating the pace, building up to a big finish, so I'll give him credit for that. Yoshi starts with the aggression first, taking control of the match, but he starts becoming a little too overconfident by taking it to the outside, but Okada puts the brakes on his attacks, DDTing him twice onto the floor, but Yoshi is able to beat the count. Now Okada's in control, and he's even taunting him to put up more of a fight. You know, might be a little bit of friendly rivalry between Chaos members, but that lit a fire under Yoshi's ass. I'm sure nobody would have picked Yoshi to win this match, so this is more of a case of what type of fight Yoshi's going to put up against Okada. Yoshi has never beaten Okada in a singles match, according to the commentators. Okada is still using the money clip, but I can't remember the last time he actually finished a match with that. So, Okada going back to his bread and butter, he hits one Rainmaker, maintaining risk control, nails a second, picks Yoshi up for a third, but Yoshi caught him with a left-handed clothesline instead. 
We now hit the 20 minute mark and Yoshi is giving Okada everything he's got trying to put the man away. He finally locks him into a butterfly lock. And at that moment, I thought, you know, what if this match goes to a draw? That's one way they could put Yoshihashi over is drawing with the Kazuchika Okada. Uh, but that's not what happened. The ending sequence of this match makes the viewer believe that it could have went either way. But with less than five minutes to go, Okada finally nails the Rainmaker for the win, walking away with two more of the points. Ooh, I tell you, this tournament is getting more and more interesting. Let's take a look at these points. All right, we got three guys with zero points. Goto, Owens, Yoshihashi, the Zero Point Club. Tamatanga is sitting by himself with two points. And tie for four, we have Tanahashi, Tai Chi, Evil, and Sonata. And tie for first place with six points each, we have Jeff Cobb taking on Okada. So it's still only the third night for the B block, so it's still a little too early to pick a winner. Evil's at four, and I've already got him picked to win the block. But again, it's anyone's game. I mean, hell, Tamatanga could, in theory, win the block if he gains more points than everyone else. I mean, he's got six matches to go. But who am I kidding? You know for a fact it's going to come between Tanahashi, Jeff Cobb, Evil, or Okada. And I'm being generous by naming four. All right, well, it's about that time. Time for me to take it home. But I don't want you to worry. You know, I, I still have a whole lot of more reviews to go because this tournament still got 13 more days to go. So if you've enjoyed my G1 coverage thus far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ring the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload new videos. Be sure to follow me on all social media. Links are in the description that will take you to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts as well as links that will take you to the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast host site, the Slamcasters YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Facebook group. That's going to be it for today. Until next time, come get slammed.